Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. This newborn bull calf has been given his identification. He is now number five at this Winterset, Iowa farm. His number will be used to track his birth date, vaccinations, and weight as he grows. But when he is sold and leaves his home farm, many of these records will likely be left behind. 60 miles away at the JDH Wagyu Farm near Villisca, Iowa, this newborn bull will be identified with a small button-like tag that includes a radio frequency transmitter. When read using a handheld wand, the radio frequency tag will reveal his nationally unique electronic identification, or EID number. His records, pulled into a spreadsheet, could easily travel with him to a new home. From back in the day when we hot branded cattle with when the old cowboy wrestlers were out there, and we've identified cattle uh, throughout history in different forms and fashions, and, and really started to incorporate electronic ID in, in recent years, within the last 10 to 15 years. The 15 digit EID number would not only be associated with a birth date, birth location, and health information, but could also be shared with USDA through a database to rule out or pinpoint affected cattle in case of a serious disease outbreak. Of the top 10 beef exporting nations in the world, um, only two of them don't have a disease traceability system in place today. That'd be us in India, and India mainly exports water buffaloes. So that does limit some of our markets there, but you know, even more importantly, I think, um, being proactive here to build a system a, a tool that can be used to limit the spread of a potential disease outbreak, I think is really, really important when we look at not only our food supply, but really our livelihoods as producers. The federal government has, in the past, planned to require the use of electronic identification tags. It announced in March 2021 that it would again delay the most recent plans, but may return to the idea in the future. In the meantime, U.S. Cattle Trace, the Kansas-based nonprofit where Grund is executive director, is trying to establish a voluntary national system for disease traceability. Cattle producers have been concerned about the additional cost. The tags cost more than the standard ear tags, but the larger investment is in the wand and associated computer gear. That equipment can begin around $1,000 and move quickly upward. There is also some legitimate concerns from ranchers that are afraid that um, having electronic IDs would just perpetuate and uh, perhaps exacerbate their concerns over lack of competition and consolidation in kind of the cattle slaughter and processing and marketing environment. Dr. Marty Zalewski is more focused on the benefits that EID tags provide to the nation's livestock herd. It allows me to rule out producers and ranchers that may not be involved in a disease event. As an example, in the state of Montana, uh, we were trying to find the source of a cow that was diagnosed with tuberculosis at slaughter. And because of the way that, that cattle and animals are commingled and sold, that animal came out of a feedlot where there was a possibility of 99 possible sources where that animal could have come from. But if that animal had a tag that was able to be read at slaughter and then correlated to her birth premises, you would have been able to hassle and trouble one premises instead of 99. JDH Wagyu President Joe Hoy says although it took a little time to adjust to the EID tags, he now can't imagine getting by without the system. As we scan it, all that information comes to our computer, uh, has the weight on them, their tag number, and any of their previous information we've put in. It's an investment in whatever you're doing, but the cost of the machine and the wand versus spending hours of typing up information and handwriting information and 
you know, not typing in the correct numbers and weights, that can be costly mistakes down the road. Hoi raises Wagyu, a Japanese breed where verifying age, birth premise, and genetic line is particularly important to buyers. The American Wagyu Association, as well as organizations that support other breeds, retain much of this data, but the EID system allows for weight and pen locations to be added to inventory spreadsheets. Hoy points out that handwritten records can sometimes be inaccurate. There's lots of opportunity for errors. You can't see it properly or mud or who knows what, but at the end of the day, it's much better with that electronic because it's so positive, you know exactly what you do have. Hoy doesn't lose sleep over the fear that some producers have of being liable if their cattle are proven to be the source of an outbreak. I think there's a little bit of grace there, but maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, I think most, produ most producers try to do the best they can to make sure they know what they're selling. But there's always diseases that come up. Through U.S. Cattle Trace, producers will continue to test the system and weigh the pros and the cons. From our perspective, we're all producers, and we don't want to mandate anything upon anybody that doesn't want to participate in a program like this. You know, we want good, proactive people that are, that are wanting to build animal disease traceability for the industry. From Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.